Ben Wurst with Conserve Wildlife Foundation of New Jersey. What I'm gonna demonstrate today is uh, just how to do this and what materials are needed to construct these cages. It's very easy to do, so anyone can do it. It's just some basic tools or ones that could be acquired at local hardware stores or home improvement stores or even Amazon. Uh, so, um, yeah, with that said, uh, here's a look at the cage. So just a uh, metal cage out of galvanized cage wire. So typically used for farm needs, uh, raising poultry uh, and game, but uh, yeah, so this is what I'm gonna show you how to make today. Very easy to construct. Okay, here are the tools that we use to make uh, a cage. We have wire cutters and hog ring pliers. So here are what the hog rings look like. These are stainless steel, but you could also use galvanized steel as well. These are 3 8 inch. Uh, I bought these on Amazon from a seller called Plant My Tank. So. All right, so to make a cage, we're using galvanized cage wire or welded wire. This we got from Tractor Supply and this is 24 inches in height. So basically what we're doing is cutting this in half and we're gonna get two cages uh, out of this roll as we roll it out. All right, so now I'm just gonna uh, unroll this and get started on making a cage. One of the things that I do for making so many of these, instead of making these in much larger diameter, the actual cage, I end up, like you could see with this one, is pretty much using the stock diameter of the, the wire when we purchase it. So what I'm gonna do now is, you know, determine where I'm gonna cut this down the, the length of it, and then that will be my first cage. All right, so I can see the other end here, right? So I can see my other end over here. Where then if I want this to wrap all the way around and be one full cage, then I will just start cutting along the line. And then I'll fasten this together after I cut it in half. Really helps to have some good wire cutters because this wire can be tough to cut. There are fence pliers you can purchase, which might be a little bit better for this, but they're much larger as well. So I prefer these smaller wire cutters. All right, slide this up. So there we have it. This will be my first cage, which I will hog ring together, but next is gonna be cutting this in half. So then I'll get two cages out of one wrap. So these are one by two inch rectangles, which allow hatchlings to leave the nest after they do hatch, which is very important. If we will be using a smaller mesh, smaller than one inches, then they wouldn't be able to leave. So you the smallest size you can go is, is definitely one inch uh, squares or uh, the one by two like this for a rectangle size. All right, this is gonna be my cage, which now I'm gonna start closing with hog rings. And after I do close this and make my cage, I will need another piece, of course, to put over top. So with the hog rings, just simply insert it in the plier, like this. All right, which this does have a spring to keep it held in there. All right, and then it's as simple as just putting the ring around uh, both sides and squeezing. There 
we go. I have two. I'll install one more. Sometimes I really like to hit uh, the sides or the parts where there's a crisscross. Uh, really make sure that it's not going to slide up or down. Side to side. All right, so now I'm going to demonstrate making the top for the cage. So that's just rolling out more of the cage wire, uh, determining where I need to cut, and then I'll attach that with hot rings. This is where you just have to be careful because the edges that you do cut are very sharp and you could easily get poked and there's some tension because this was rolled up. I would definitely recommend wearing safety glasses or gloves. So I have this rolled out a little bit. This is where I'm gonna flip this over. Okay, as you can see, and with this I should be able to get at least two tops of these cages and I will put this on the edge and then I will mark where I need to cut and I'll do one cut and then I'll cut down the line and get these tops on these cages. Now that I have that cut, I can flip over my cages. What I like to do is have the outside edge of my roll that I started with on the top. So you can see where I cut it because there are these spikes, right? So these are these will be what gets driven down into the ground. And on this side, there isn't as long as spikes, but you could cut it in the middle where then uh, you, will, you will have that, but then one will be shorter than the other doesn't really matter. Uh, terrapin eggs, when they're in the ground, they're about four to six inches in depth. So when we put this down about that far and have a stone on top, it'll easily prevent any predators from getting to the eggs. All right, so now that I have that, I set this on top. I get my hog rings and my pliers. I already have one loaded up here. And I'm going to fasten this and work my way around. So I like to put four, you could do more. Uh, nothing's really gonna be able to pull this up and get in there. Now I'm, I'm just gonna cut in the middle here after fastening this other top. And I'll bend over the sides and be good to go. over the one side. I'm just going to bend over this side. That's that. I have two new cages to protect more terrapin eggs. Thanks a lot for watching. Please make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for more content.